Trudeau needs to understand that not everyone is as dumb as he is. Sure, his liberal politicians and the NDP, including Jagmeet Singh, share in his stupid ditty, but that is likely where it ends. And that is why a politician, particularly the Premier of Alberta, stood against him and his silly gun laws by refusing to let the RCMP in the province get the guns confiscated from Canadian civilians. When Trudeau said that the RCMP would buy back the confiscated guns and equip themselves with them, the public safety minister, Marco Mendocino, sent a secret letter to the government in Alberta asking that they cooperate with Trudeau. In the letter, he pleaded with the government to implement Trudeau's gun laws in the province and said that his office would be directly involved with policing authorities to implement the buyback program. As you might have guessed, the Alberta government refused to do so. In relation to that, the Alberta Minister of Justice, Tyler Shandro, held a press conference where he said that the Alberta government would provide no such support to the Trudeau government in enforcing the gun laws and the buyback program. And his office then issued orders to the K-Division in Alberta, telling them expressly to ignore the federal gun laws. In his words, Alberta is not legally obligated and will not offer any provincial resources to the federal government as it seeks to confiscate lawfully acquired firearms. The decision to ban over 1,500 models of different firearms simply because the style of the firearm was deemed to be aesthetically displeasing is offensive and suggests to us that you are uninterested in meaningfully addressing gun crime. Further, I am concerned that federal officials have indicated that they will direct the RCMP to participate in the confiscation program. I am advising you that I am disputing such direction or intention to take such direction, as outlined in Article 23.0 of the Provincial Police Service Agreement. He continued by saying, and I quote, that finally, preliminary estimates suggest that you will need to confiscate over 30,000 firearms in Alberta alone. We believe that Public Safety Canada does not have the capacity, wherewithal, or the resources to seriously attempt this effort. And much like the Long Gun Registry, we believe your efforts will fail in the face of opposition from the public. You'll agree with me that Shandro really spoke with sincerity and fire without caring whose ox was gored, and it is applaudable. He didn't stop there, it seems, as he gave instructions to the Deputy Commissioner of the RCMP in Alberta, Zablocki, where he said, I am writing to formally advise you that the confiscation program is not an objective, priority, or goal of the province or the provincial police service, and nor is such deployment appropriate to the effective, efficient delivery of police services. Despite taking this step, I remain concerned that the federal government will direct the RCMPK division to serve as confiscation agents. To prevent this from happening, I am disputing such direction or intention to take such direction, as outlined in Article 23.0 of the Provincial Police Service Agreement. Recall that Trudeau first proposed gun laws after the mass shooting that happened in Uvalde in the United States. After that incident, he held a press conference where he asked for a speedy passage of the bill prohibiting handguns and others like the AR-15. In the month of May, he announced a nationwide freeze of handgun sales in the country, and he said, and I quote, it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. In other words, we are capping the market for handguns. At that time, the Liberal government looked to retrieve the firearms licenses belonging to perpetrators of domestic violence or criminal harassment, and a press release at that time promised a red flag law that would allow judges to force gun owners considered a danger to themselves or others to surrender their firearms. When Trudeau was asked if the new gun legislation was a step too far and was harsh, he said, we need only look south of the border to know that if we do not take action firmly and rapidly, it gets worse and worse and more difficult to counter. Of course, the Liberals received heat from the Conservative Party following their gun control proposal. The Conservative Party stated that the Liberals were not really keen to protect the lives of Canadians from the danger of shootings like the one that happened in Texas, and that if they were, the Trudeau government would have targeted the illegal smuggling of guns into the country from the border. At that time, the Conservative Party released a statement that said, the Trudeau Liberals are not serious about stopping dangerous criminals from getting their hands on illegal guns, and they are not serious about making our streets safer. They only care about wedging and dividing Canadians. The Trudeau government is not truly interested in fighting gun crime and implementing a thorough gun control exercise in the country, and the Alberta Minister of Justice, Tyler Shandro, is of the same opinion as he accused the Trudeau government of not meaningfully fighting gun crime in the country. If the Trudeau government were well and truly bothered, they would have drafted and include a part that would address the spate of illegal smuggling of guns into the country as statistics have shown that the main problem of guns in the country comes from illegal gun trafficking, which is the same problem that the United States face and that Trudeau has failed to address. The police inspector, Joe Matthews, who heads the Toronto Police's Guns and Gangs Unit, affirmed this when he said, and I quote, they are being smuggled in because people that want to possess them do not register firearms. 
They are criminal, the criminal entity of the city, mainly gangs, but there are illegal firearms that are much easier to acquire from the United States. When it was discovered that 85% of guns seized by the Toronto police in 2020 were in fact smuggled, Matthews said, they come in in many different ways. Transport trucks by plane, private citizens, and their vehicles can smuggle guns into the country. As much as you can imagine, that's the way that they can come in. So what's the market like for illegal guns? It's a huge market. A certain Marcel Wilson, who runs the One by One movement, which is a think tank that aims at stopping extreme violence, also had something to say about the illegal smuggling of guns and how it affected gun violence in Canada. What gives him credibility in this area is the fact that he was once the leader of a Toronto gang and was involved in the illegal trafficking of guns at that time. In his words, we use the car method. It can be as ruthless as a family being kidnapped and forcing a mule to come across the borders where, if they're unsuccessful, or if they give up the information, their family will be harmed. Now, as far as getting it across, we have such an open border, but we use several different avenues of doing that. There are areas along the border where there are indigenous reserves and we would exploit them to bring weapons in. And then there are literally areas that you could throw a bag over the border and pick it up. And that's not all there is to it. Wilson also talks about the more sophisticated ways of getting illegal guns into Canada. In his words, some were like tricked out cars. So cars that have special compartments where you might have to turn the volume knob three times to the left and hit the horn and literally your dashboard will drop out and there will be a compartment with like some special lining that the scanners couldn't read. So they are becoming more sophisticated in the methodology, but it's kind of still the same. These are things that the Trudeau government has clearly ignored in their pursuit of supposedly making the country safe for Canadians by implementing gun control. I mean, is it really gun control if there are illegal guns smuggled to replace and possibly surpass the number of those confiscated from law-abiding citizens? As you must have heard previously, illegal guns were needed and purchased by those who didn't want their firearms registered undoubtedly for shady purposes and now Trudeau is disarming honest citizens who are most likely targets of those who purchase smuggled guns. I mean, no one would try to rob 24 Sussex Drive and even if someone tried, they would be resisted by the heavily armed security attached to Trudeau. Unlike other Canadians who have only the police to protect them, now their means of defense is gone. And the possibility is there that when the police arrive at the crime scene, the deed has already been done and the perpetrators are at large. Speaking on the issue, firearms advocate Tracy Wilson took to Twitter where she said that violent crimes still prevailed in cities and that the illegal smuggling of guns was still rampant. Some have said that the Trudeau government is only focused on playing politics with the gun control laws than they are on actually protecting the populace and a bit of history supports that claim. Historically, the liberals have always used the promise of gun control laws as a tool to win the support of voters prior to an election. In the 2015 election, the Liberal Party wielded the promise of a pragmatic approach to gun control when Trudeau was up against Stephen Harper. According to Open Editions Journal, the Liberal Party's 2015 election platform included a promise to get handguns and assault weapons off our streets, while criticizing former Prime Minister Harper for steadily weakening gun laws in ways that make Canadians more vulnerable and communities more dangerous. When Trudeau won the 2015 elections, he was reluctant to introduce the new gun control measures as his campaign had promised. This inaction by his government then gave the impression that gun control was an issue that the Liberals liked to invoke during election campaigns to attract urban progressive voters, but were reluctant to implement once they secured government. And knowing the kind of man Justin Trudeau is, the assumption is not far from the truth. It could even be the truth itself. What do you think of the Alberta government standing up to the Trudeau federal government? I believe that it is commendable and that more provincial governments should do the same because unfortunately, the man at the top who happens to be the prime minister is dangerously prone to making stupid decisions. You can leave your thoughts on my question and the video in general in the comments section down below. Your opinions are most welcome. Also, we understand that many of our comments here are not seen tactless of receiving engagements because of censorship. Hence, Front Page News created a Telegram group where we can engage ourselves on matters of national interest without fear of being censored. The link to the group is in the description. We would appreciate it if you leave us a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Thanks for staying with us, and I will see you in the next one.